I got my start in radio in 1987 at the legendary KNAC in Los Angeles. And man, what a great time it was to be in radio. It was before the big radio conglomerates. We were owned by a realtor of all people. And uh, the bands at the time were all coming up and were hungry and were all playing down on the Sunset Strip. I saw Motley Crue and Guns N' Roses, Jane's Addiction, Red Hot Chili Peppers, even before these guys were signed. And just being able to be a part of that scene was just amazing. I did a radio show on KNAC with Ricky Rackman, who at the time was hosting Headbangers Ball on MTV. And all these bands would just stop by on a Saturday night just to say, hey, what's going on? Here's some stuff we're working on, listen to it. I heard the Megadeth record eight months before it came out, their big one that really blew up, Countdown to Extinction. And I could tell from that day, hearing it eight months before, just hearing the rough mixes, that that was gonna be a big record, and it turned out to be. It was just a fantastic time to be in radio. I was in the middle of the best scene in the world at the right time. In the mid-90s, radio changed. The big conglomerates came in and bought up all the mom and pop radio stations, and that's what happened to KNAC. And they decided to change the format, which I wasn't really right for. So I decided to move to Florida, really to play golf. But once you've done radio, it's kind of in your blood. And soon enough, I was working at a couple of radio stations, and I ended up moving down here to Southwest Florida in order to work at a radio station. And I started doing a show called The Hair Appointment, which featured all the bands that I had grown up with back in LA. In our pilot episode of Real Rock Stories, we feature a guy by the name of Rob Grad. Now, Rob used to be in a band called Kick Tracy that I interviewed back in the KNAC days. After that interview was over, we had a great conversation about, of all things, golf. Now, you fast forward to me being in Southwest Florida doing the hair appointment show, I send Rob an email to see if he wants to do another radio interview. He calls me back. I tell him about the golf conversation that we had, and he totally remembers it. Now, it turns out that Rob's career and life have taken a complete 180, which makes for a great real rock story. So we bring him out to do the show. His music is so good, and it translates so well acoustic the way that he did it on the show. And his stories are great, too. It just makes for a really great real rock story. What sets real rock stories apart from all other music shows is we're not really looking to get the gossip and the glitz and the glamour. What we're trying to do is get down to what these guys were thinking when these songs were written, what they were going through, why they decided to write this particular song at that particular time in their life. And that's the really nice thing about Real Rock Stories is the relaxed atmosphere lends these guys to open up and go ahead and share these kind of intimate moments that they've had in their lives with the people who are really interested. They tell a story, they play a song. We do this three times in a half an hour show, and I think we really get some great stuff just because they're not in a sterile television environment. They're not feeling like the media is on top of them. It's just them telling their stories.